Hello friends, this video on molecular basis of inheritance part 23 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So this was about the transcription process. Now whatever we have uh, discussed that is in general for any transcription process but it has been observed that in case of eukaryotes there are certain additional complexities which are experienced which are not there in case of prokaryotes. So let us try to see what are the additional complexities in the process of transcription that takes place only in eukaryotes. So let us look at some of the additional complexities which are found in the eukaryotic organisms. So the first complexity which arises is the presence of exons and introns. We already spoke about them right now it has been observed so introns are those regions which do not code for proteins. So we do, nobody wants introns because they are anyways not going to code for proteins so they need to be removed. Now the question is the more complex an organism is the more amount of introns are found. So if it is a very simple organism it, it is also possible that there are no introns. For example in case of prokaryotes there might there, this complexity of exons and introns might not arise but the, because the organism is pretty simple so you only have exons. So that is uh, like simple enough but when you go beyond to complex organisms what happens is you end up having more and more introns. Now what will you do with those introns? You need to get rid of those introns and that is why RNA splicing has to take place to remove the introns. So primary RNA transcripts are non-functional due to the presence of introns and this is the reason why the initial RNA which is being formed as a result of transcription they are not functional because there are introns and introns act as intervening sequences between exons. So exons can code for proteins but since in between introns are present so this introns interferes with the functioning of exons and therefore protein synthesis cannot take place. So to find out the solution for this what is done is so this one which comes out is the initial mRNA which is also known as pre mRNA so now you know what is mRNA right the messenger RNA is the result of transcription so as a result to get rid of this what happens is uh, the process of RNA splicing takes place so see this is the reason due to the presence of introns even the DNA cannot code for proteins because inter introns interfere and these introns and exons are also present in the initial mRNA which is also known as pre mRNA and then finally RNA splicing takes place where all the introns are being removed from the sequence. So what you are left with is only the exons which can code for proteins and this is known as the mature M. So there are a couple of additional things which had to take place in case of eukaryotic RNA. Now the eukaryotic RNA must undergo a series of modifications before it is brought out of the nucleus. Because only when it comes out of the nucleus, it will be able to reach the cytoplasm and the ribosomes are located in the cytoplasm and the ribosomes are the sites for protein synthesis. So it has to actually reach the ribosome. Now before it, is, it comes out of the nucleus, it has to undergo few modifications and these modifications involve capping and tailing. So let us see what are these. So additional modifications to the 5 prime and 3 prime ends of the eukaryotic pre mRNA. So what kind of modifications are these as the name says capping that means to put a cap on something. So let us see what is capping. So it is addition of a cap to the first nucleotides 5 prime end of pre mRNA. So as a result of transcription pre mRNA will be formed. Right? As soon as the pre mRNA is formed, the 5 prime end will have a cap like structure. Now what is this cap which is being added and in fact capping is the first modification that takes place in the initially formed mRNA. Now why do we need capping and what is this capping actually? 
So this ensures protection to the transcript. Now this is the initial mRNA and it has got very important sequence which is going to decide the sequence of the amino acids and that is how it is going to help in protein synthesis. So the information which is there in this mRNA is extremely important. So it needs to be protected and to ensure protection from exonucleases that means the enzymes which are present outside which are there which are located here and there. So they can degrade this unprotected information it is something like this let us suppose if uh, if you are carrying some valuables and if you are roaming around at night uh, on the road the chances that you might be robbed are more right but if you are keeping your valuables well protected in a bank or if you are keeping it locked in your house then the chances of remain protected or the chances of being degraded by somebody else is less Right. So similar is the case here. In this case also the initial mRNA which is being formed that is being provided with a cap on one end because that 5 prime end is a free end. So somebody might come and attack on the 5 prime end. So that is why it is protected by providing a cap and this process is known as capping. So if protected it can be utilized in a nice way for protein synthesis. It acts as a recognition signal for ribosomes to bind with mRNA. Also, when it goes out of the uh, nucleus into the cytoplasm, so the ribosome should be able to recognize the mRNA. So the cap also acts as that recognition signal. Cap is formed by methyl guanosine triphosphate. So this, what can, this is what that constitutes the cap. So the cap is actually this compound. Next is tailing and tailing is nothing but addition of a poly A tail to the 3 prime end of pre-mRNA. So the new mRNA which is being formed as a result of transcription it will have two free ends. One is the 3 prime end, one is the 5 prime end. So on the 5 prime end we add the cap and on the 3 prime end we add a tail. So what is that tail made up of? So the tail is essential for mRNA stability. So basically it provides stability to the entire mRNA structure. And why is the tail called poly A mRNA? So let us see that. So this poly means many and A is for A stands for the adenyl group. So multiple A groups are being added towards the 3 prime end. So here you can see this is the mRNA in the, in the 5 prime end cap is added and in, towards the 3 prime end the poly A tail is added. So now it is well protected on both ends and also from middle RNA splicing has happened. That means the introns have been removed. So only then we call this mRNA as the mature mRNA and now it is ready to move out of the nucleus into the cytoplasm. So here you can see in this picture, so first of all inside the nucleus what happens? RNA polymerase action takes place and as a result the pre-mRNA is formed. Now as soon as the pre-mRNA is formed the first step that takes place is the capping occurs that is the cap is added to the 5 prime end. After that splicing takes place when all the introns are removed and after that a tail is added to the 3 prime end that is the poly A tail and then you have this which is referred as the mature mRNA. So this is what do what we mean when we say the transformation from pre mRNA to mature mRNA and then this mature mRNA is ready to move out of the nucleus into the cytoplasm and looking at the cap of this mRNA the ribosomes which are present in the cytoplasm will be able to recognize the mRNA and and that is how the further process of translation will take place. So these are some of the events which take place in case of eukaryotes but they do not happen in case of prokaryotes because in prokaryotes the concept of introns, exons etc are not there. So as I said the tail is formed by many adenine nucleotides and that is why the name is poly A tail. So remember this, these are adenine nucleotides. Now, we have spoken a lot about the RNA polymerase enzyme because they play the most important role in the process of transcription. Now, there are many different types of RNA polymerases which exist in case of eukaryotes. In simpler organisms like the bacteria, uh, 
It is like there is one single RNA polymerase and all the genes are transcribed by the single RNA polymerase. But in case of eukaryotes, multiple RNA polymerase exists and each type of RNA polymerase transcribe different classes of genes. So let us see what are the different types of RNA polymerase which exist in eukaryotes. So three different nuclear RNA polymerases exist and they are RNA polymerase 1, RNA polymerase 2 and RNA polymerase 3. So we have three different varieties of the same enzyme in case of eukaryotes. Now since we have three different varieties therefore uh, the division of labor occurs in case of eukaryotes because when you have three different types of enzyme, one will handle one job, the other will handle the other job and the third will handle a third job. So that is how the work has been divided between these three enzymes. And But this concept is not there in prokaryotes because they just have one RNA polymerase. So that RNA polymerase takes care of the entire transcription process. So here RNA polymerase 1 is responsible for transcription of rRNA that is the ribosomal RNA. So this is taken care by RNA polymerase 1. Now RNA polymerase by default will help in the process of transcription. So if it is polymerase 1 it will help in transcription of rRNA that is ribosomal RNA. If it is poly polymerase 2 then it will help in transcription of pre-mRNA. So from pre-mRNA after all the changes take place like capping, tailing and RNA splicing, mature mRNA will be formed. RNA polymerase 3 will help in the transcription of tRNA that is the transfer RNA. So for all the three different types of RNA you have three different types of RNA polymerase enzymes. But in case of egg, you, uh, prokaryotes that is not the case. All types of RNAs are being transcribed by the same RNA polymerase. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.